doing a retrospective on UFO. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is alive and well, and the band is back together. No surprise, we're all alive. Um, I think retrospectives on bands that have one or two deceased members are, you mm -hmm. know, like case in point, Thin Lizzy. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. But it's weird because uh, a lot of friends of mine actually died through various things, you know, and uh, so it's quite funny that particularly myself, Phil, uh, and Michael, I think, have been sort of through it and backwards, you know. Yeah. So we actually we were um, not involving ourselves with uh, doing anything like that on this tour because we figured that uh, it would be nice to actually do it and know what you're doing, you know. Right. <laughs> I saw the show, um, not last night, but the night before. In, oh, uh, did you enjoy it? Fantastic. Thank you. Um, the band sounded great. Everyone was yeah, really tight. The sound was fantastic. It's been really, e well, it sounds easy to say, but we had three weeks rehearsal because, to be honest, up until that point, uh, after 12 years, actually, since we've all been together, we didn't know how it was going to go, and we found it very easy to get to do as it, it was like last week, you know, sort of thing, our first rehearsal. So we just worked through the songs every day once any little problems and that. In fact, the hardest thing probably has been putting the acoustic thing together at Michael's, but right. we, we wanted to represent that in, in the show, you know. Uh -huh. um, how did the reunion finally come together? How did it finally jump? Um, a lot of talking about it, yeah. and Michael said, would we be interested in getting together to do the Scorpion shows in Europe? Right. And it was a little bit short notice for, for organising it, and, and obviously the, with the costs of running a show, you know, you can't have to, it's the financial side of it, it has to be sort of thought out. We didn't get the opportunity to really, you know, develop it. <clears throat> so, um, the, we were offered these shows uh, for the night because we'd been playing about a year and a half ago, or two years ago in, in Germany. And, uh, you know, so would you like to play, you know, Christmas? So we said to Michael, well, well let's, what about doing these? So, without saying it's, it's like a, Rehearsals is the wrong word, but uh, it's our first time together. We thought, well, let's see how it goes. This will be fun. Come to Germany before Christmas and right. enjoy it. Right. And, and, and we found we thoroughly enjoy it. You know, we get we get on very well. Best Great. of it's because uh, it's sort of pretty straight. Right. But uh, you know, everything's going really well. So we're actually enjoying ourselves for the first time for a long time. <laughs> Great. Um, what is the current label status of UFO? Well, we actually, no, we were actually completely unsigned with everything. Um, in what, fact, what happened with Castle Communications? How come well, only one record? Yeah, well, that was just a one-off deal, uh, to be honest, because it could have been, in fact, just a, an album of Phil and I with a couple of people, but unfortunately we, we fell into the, the thing of people always say, well, it's you and Phil, you know, if you don't do it as UFO. Actually, we're quite proud of the songs. We quite like the songs on that album. But, uh, I like them very much. We, we'd have preferred to have done them with Michael and Andy and Paul because it's the way we work together, we develop sounds far more than when, you know, Phil and I, we tend to sit with an acoustic and work on stuff, and then we take it to a band, whereas <clears throat> you might have an initial idea with these guys, and we get in a room, and we start playing, and everybody develops a sound together, you know? Uh-huh. How come nothing's been released in the U.S. in a long time, um, on CD or whatever? Do you mean of, of anything, even like the Castle stuff or that? Yeah, well, the High Stakes was not released we in didn't, the States. We didn't want it, to be honest with you. We, we knew we'd been talking about doing this for about a year and a half, two years with Michael. And um, really, we, we were looking for the ideal opportunity, i.e. this being the ideal opportunity to get together and not try it out, it's the wrong word, because we always want to do do something with 100% efficiency right. and um, really that's why we didn't want anything other than what we consider to be the UFO, this band, right. coming out and, and we, we would tackle like, doing record deals and that very carefully because we, we figured that you know at this point in our careers we want everything to be absolutely right because you know it sounds a bit corny but we've learned through a lot of mistakes we've done in the past you know that right. you can do something and it comes out of the fifty percent of its poss you know possibilities. You know. What, what did you think of the lights out in Tokyo? I, th I thought I quite enjoyed it actually. Yeah, it was, I thought it was. I fantastic. mean, for what it was, it was you know we we, were, we liked the other songs we did you right. know, off of, off of the high stakes. Um, once again, you know, we're, 
asked to go to Japan, and, you know, it was good money and stuff like that, and we thought, well, you know, we're musicians, we play, and Phil right. wants to sing, so, you know, you can only sit at home so long, you know. Okay, because there's been no appearances since 86, since uh -huh. the Misdemeanor Tour, which yeah. didn't well, we're, gonna, uh, we're actually going to rehearse, I think, and start writing in Phoenix next month. Really? I think, or in February, last, around about the end of January. Um, I believe Michael's doing his acoustic thing with the Scorpions in Japan, and then we're going to get together in Phoenix. That's, that's is there a rough be a, plan. Is there going to be a tour of the States? Yeah, we will actually want to do an album first, though, because we want to be able to represent... You see, because we could... Doing the Strangers in the Night... Uh, material is great, but you know it'd be quite nice to actually be able to represent the band in 1993 and show what we can do. Right. As much as uh, having the material from Strangers, which right. which we feel is actually sounds quite modern. You know, <laughs> it does. Out, you know. it, it definitely stands the test. Of and uh, and so we we thought we'd like that, and, and also the fact that yeah. we've been advised yeah. really that. To do a tour of the States, you, you really do need a label behind you. Oh, just, sure. You know, just with the fact that if you want to do a good show, you, the costing can be quite a oh, lot, yeah. you know. So, there is going to be an album with this lineup of UFO. Yeah, all being well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's the plan, actually, right. is to do an album and tour, basically, a world tour, probably starting from the States and then going back, maybe starting in Japan, I don't know, but with an album as well. A lot of people I mean, are going to be looking forward to it. It's that. very tempting to go and do some shows, some one-off ones, but right. you know, we figured that these seven shows in Germany were an ideal opportunity for everybody to feel comfortable because we all live in different parts of the world as well. Right. Michael's actually living in the States. I live in uh, England in Copenhagen, my wife's Danish. Uh -huh. Andy lives in, uh, well, lives in England or Los Angeles and uh, and uh, um, well, Paul Raymond lives in Tokyo, so or just wow. outside of Tokyo. So it's, it's putting the whole thing together. You know, you have to sort of find a base. And find Speaking out. of Paul Raymond, whatever happened with um, the Paul Raymond project? Another still, another one well, we can't get. Well, no, the U.S. He, release. Yeah, What's he, wrong? Um, <laughs> he does it in Japan anyway. They've been playing and stuff. You know, but really? I think it's a lot harder to break, take something out and send it over from Japan. than uh, um, I don't really know because I know. Because uh, whilst this project will take everybody's time and it's fully up and running, um, you know, everybody has an interest in doing other things. Right. Although Phil and I, to be honest with you, felt that we didn't, so because we like working together, we didn't really want to be forced into a situation of doing another UFO without the people we feel that is, you know, the band. Right. Um, regarding the, the posters, the ads for mm -hmm. the, the gig, I noticed Paul Chapman's name was on there. Well, you see, was, yeah, yeah. I was was Michael a last minute? No, uh, Michael had been they talking were. to us about doing something. These shows were offered, and we didn't know really. We've been talking for a while whether or not the whole, whether or not we could honestly say it was going to come together. Right. You know, and but we'd spoken to everybody, and um, Michael was going to come back to us, or, or you know, just basically it was up in the air. And we've been, well, we see, speak to everybody involved with the band. We're still quite, we're quite friendly with everybody now. Right. So with speaking to Paul, it was like, did he want to do some writing? He said, did we want to come down to Florida where he lives? Um, obviously, the, uh, the the ideal situation was to, we wanted to work with Michael, and that was that. But uh, right. it had been mentioned that if you know, perhaps doing it with Paul and then working with Michael. Yeah, because that, that's the rumors we have. We heard in the states mm. that um, Michael was going to do his acoustic thing, uh -huh. and and uh, it would be UFO with Paul yeah, Chapman once but, again. But f you know, fortunately. Um, Michael just said, no, I'll do it, let's do it, and so we've actually got the opportunity now in a perfect situation, because obviously it, we prefer working with Michael, I mean, Paul's a friend, but he's, this is a band that we wanted to tour, right. you know, but we were also, if you agree to do, in, to do something contractually and you don't do it because A, a guitarist isn't there, and we could have ended up in quite a bit of trouble, so obviously, right. you right. know, but uh, that Contracts was, and yeah, but Paul was actually something that was very in, in between the, the situation where we didn't know whether or not it was going to come together with Michael. Right. And if we'd, we'd kind of undertaken to do this. Um, I, for one, would like to see a, a 20th anniversary box set on the band. From, that would be From Chrysalis or EM, yeah. whoever. EMI is now Chrysalis, yeah? Mm -hmm. I, for one, would like to see like a nice four CD box set with lots of rarities. We were thinking of actually talking to them about it, but you see, 
until you've actually got the whole project up and running, i.e. a lot of people felt that perhaps because of the past we wouldn't be able to get together in a rehearsal room and last a week. Right. And we actually went from day to day, every day was fun. You know, it was quite, we actually enjoy getting together. I mean, I, I really enjoy playing that. You know, I could uh, tell from the other night. I do, I mean, I do anyway, but you see, I used to take quite a lot of um, different things to get me actually to enjoy doing it, you know, to the point where you kind of have to keep up and up to get, right. to get I mean, I, I actually enjoy playing, but I, I mean, I do actually play totally straight at the moment, which is the first time in my life I've ever done that, and, you know, I actually sometimes wonder how I managed to play, you know, sort of things. So I, do, I do enjoy that. What, what so, happened to... Um, Where's wasted? What are the other? What are the well, you know, the folks from wasted oh, oh, doing now? Enough, that was a very similar situation to, to this in a way. You know, he started to change members. We got to the point where I thought, well, I, I didn't want the responsibility of the band because you always have to worry about who's getting what money and paying this and paying that. Right. And really, the, the whole enjoyment out of it was going. You know, in fact, it, I'd rather have been able to go and play at some clubs or something right. with a band and not have to worry about overheads and record deals. Than, um, than the actual thing of going on the road, tour in America and that. If right. he's gone, replacing him with somebody else, right. it, it all became a pain. Whereas yeah. with this, at the moment, it's, it's real good fun, you know. Yeah. I mean, you I might all end in Hamburg, but I mean, you know, <laughs> but no, you know, seriously, this is actually everybody feels that they, they yeah. this is their, their enjoyment. I saw um, Wasted at Lemoore's in Brooklyn. Oh, really, with Danny? Uh, so, same, yeah. with, uh, Steve, we did, Steve Harris came out. That's right, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did um, Netherlands with the, with Maiden, didn't we, as well that night? Yeah, that night. Yeah. That was the night of the riots at the Maiden. That's Maryland. right. I'm thinking, <laughs> unfortunately, there wasn't too many people at the Le Mans, so I think it may have affected it, or I don't know. But uh, was it? It wasn't a bad band, actually, was it? No, they kicked ass. Mm, there was Johnny was good. He played with Britney Fox afterwards, and Danny had that band Taiketu. What was the name? Taiketu. Oh, Taiketu. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had that band, but uh, but you know it was. Uh, I enjoyed it. Actually, at that point, it was starting to get too not serious. But you know, when you look around and go, well, really, you can't just put five people together and make a band that is a great band. Now, with this th this lineup of people, with sort of five individual people, so people that get together, actually enjoy one another's company. But you take the five individuals, and it makes a real good band. I actually feel like it's a real great band, and that's after three shows, you know. It was only because people sort of, we thought we'd probably have to really work on the songs, you know. But as soon as Andy started playing, and I played to him, the feel of the back rhythm section, and Michael yeah. and Paul put the guitars over the top, the whole thing builds. So hopefully by Hamburg, I'd like to think it would be you know, absolutely awesome. You know? It was because awesome two nights ago, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's pretty obvious on stage that you and Michael are having oh. a great time. Oh yeah, yeah, we do. We really enjoy it. You know, and I think that's the fact that Michael hasn't played electric for nearly three years on stage. It's, you know, it's, and it's basically it's his band. I mean, when I say it's his band, it's his band, Phil's band, my band, right. Paul and Andy. You know, Nobody's it's kind the of boss. Like, it's not exactly yeah. <laughs> uh, like when he had MSG and that. In theory, you've got a lot of responsibilities you perhaps don't want, you know. Whereas when you can filter five people's energies into one thing, right. then the band almost takes a responsibility, you know. Right. Um, I always thought that um, Phil's writing was absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. on, on every album. Yeah, yeah. And um, I like a lot of his mellower songs, like um, "You and Me," "Terry." Oh yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of the, a lot of the ballads and. Um, I was wondering if you would ever consider. We, we were going to do some more, a uh, couple of ballads and things, but you know. Um, yeah, I heard "Try Me." Was yeah, we, be we one rehearsed of "Try Me." It was sounding real good. Um, what happened with that? We, well, to be honest, you know, with three bands uh, on and um, going late, we didn't want to drop the energy level too much, and particularly with acoustics, we figured two acoustic songs would be enough because we saw that we we thought we had about an hour and a half or more. Um, but we figured at this point in time, maybe it's a good idea that we would go out and play hard stuff and that. But we would like to incorporate a lot of lot of other things, a lot yeah. of ideas that you know. Having once we get past this stage, and, it, and it's wrong to say it's like a paid rehearsal, but to a certain extent, it's, <laughs> to a certain extent, it's almost like a paid rehearsal. We're very lucky that we, you know, it's a bit like having fun. Actually, yeah, going right. out having fun and being paid to do it. So, do you think Phil would ever release an album of all ballads? 
a love song album for <laughs> Phil Martin. I, I actually, I, I actually found out Phil quite likes soul stuff and that at times, you know. But then again, he, then he likes the real hard stuff. So yeah. I tell you, I wouldn't mind doing something with Phil like that, you know, just for fun. But um, or maybe another thing is redoing some of the older stuff, you know. But then again, as soon as you start redoing older stuff, yeah. uh, people go, oh, look what they're doing. Yeah. But with live, another the live album. Yeah. No. Another live <laughs> album with uh, some stuff on it like that might, might not be yeah. bad. Because we will certainly be trying other songs. Um, the song Love Lost Love mm. from Fawcett is yeah. always one of my personal favorites. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really enjoy that one. Has that ever been played live? We could have easily done it. We were doing different things in rehearsals. And, uh, and to be honest, we, we pretty much thought that we'd base it around the strangers. Uh, thing because that was the last last anybody heard of this band playing together you see uh -huh. we figured that if a lot of people would perhaps maybe if they haven't heard anything else they would have heard The Strangers so we based a lot of it around The Strangers right. so, so. Has that song ever been done live in the history of the Possibly, band? I don't know, you know, if you remember a lot of my past I can't remember <laughs> about any of it It's hazy mm. <laughs> um, Okay, in the early days, like 74, around there, there was a song called Cold Turkey. Ah. Who wrote that, was that one? With John Lennon. Oh, is that right? Yeah, John Lennon. I didn't know that. Mm. That never made it to an album. That was a, no, a, a actually, UFO cover yeah, in John That was actually with Paul Chapman and Michael Palmer. Right. Okay, I didn't know that. Any, where we can get the old, uh, the seven inch picture sleeves. Oh, I wouldn't know. No? No, I don't You know what they're going for. Have you picked up a, uh, a copy know, of your record I collector in UK? Can, I think you can buy them at markets in, in England. I know yeah. people who uh, actually collect records that know about it. I do. You know, I got a whole bunch of pictures of them. Is that right? Yeah, I do. Now, if they, you know, it's like they go, oh, he's made a record, we'll buy it. You know, we, <laughs> you know they, they get all your own uncles, go to all the shops, and better buy it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are selling for like 75 pounds. Yeah, it's quite Some amazing how things. much stuff goes for. Yeah. I think that's in general, you know, around that period, you know, you, it, there's things, not just us, but I mean, a lot of uh, rare rarities and boot, bootlegs and things right. like that. You know. um, will this reunion tour be released on Laserdisc or video in any continent of the world? Well, we hadn't planned to do any filming particularly on, on any of this, only because, like I say, we wanted to. But at the end of the, by the time we play Hamburg, go right. That's it. This is absolutely, you know, uh, this is how we want it to be, and you know, and we're going from there with the right. doing album and that. Um, so we didn't really want to put too much pressure on ourselves, you know. Um, but you know, I don't know. You know, we, we we were talking about doing those sort of things, but we figured it's something that you know we have a bit more time to to. to Put the project forward, right. and talk to the right people, and do it well. So, so as of right now, you have you guys have no film crew set up. No, to, no, nothing to the capture the moment. No, because we anticipate the moment to go a bit longer. Cool. <laughs> um, for the the album that's coming up with the UFO lineup as it is right now, yeah, would Ron Nevison be considered? Um, as a choice for producer, or, yeah, Ron or no always, chance. Yeah, Ron would always be considered. The only thing uh, I think is sometimes you don't make it too much like oh, it, you know, a bit like memory lane, you know. So obviously, right. it, there's there's certain ways to do things, and I guess you know, I mean, Ron's great. Um, it might might be, I mean, I've always liked to work with Ron. But having said that, if there are, you know, we we'll look at that situation, try and get the best available, and also for the right. money, you know, because. Right. You know, unfortunately, it's so tied to a budget, and you know, um, obviously with the right record deals and stuff like that, and we look at what we've got. Right. Know. Because Ron actually came, well, when we got Ron, Ron was actually engineering things for people like Led Zeppelin and Bad Company. And oh that. yeah, big so we kind of, Yeah, so we looked at things like that and found, say found him, but it was said, well, he could get that sort of sound, he might be good to work with. So obviously, Ron or somebody, you know, of that quality that's right. been, you know, you're looking for somebody who's got possibly a new edge to things, you know. Right. Obsession was amazing. That's, that's, that's my fun. number one favourite studio right, album actually, of all time. They said, said that, they said it's their favourite album. Uh, uh, that's that's my fun. number one favourite studio right, album actually, of all time. They said that, they said it's their favourite album. Uh, uh, Obsession and probably Force It, two of my yeah. faves. Yeah, and of course, stuff. Stuff. Um, 
Well, I'm like, so there's a lot, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. The Strangers actually came together very well. It would have been interesting to see an album after that, but uh, what, what would have happened? But in some ways, it's a bit like we've left it there. It would be great to come back with a new one with modern technology. Right. And, you know, although to be honest, we'd like it to keep it pretty earthy. Right. At the same time. Um, in the video, The History of UFO, yeah. um, Paul Chapman took a little bit of a slagging off. Not a lot, a yeah. little bit. Um, Did was, you really think he didn't contribute that much to the band's creativity? No, not, not in the same way. Not, you see, because, you know, in a way, the, 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 the video thing was kind of like talking about us working together with Michael, and it wasn't intentional that it should sound like that. Yeah. What it was... No, you didn't it, say it, you said yeah. no disrespect. Yeah, no, what, what it, it is, is, it's just it different, it's like <laughs> a different way of doing it, that, uh, so, I guess a certain amount of quality in, the, in their approach. I mean, Michael could come up with really qu quality things, right. you know, uh, without, at times, you know, I mean, I, I must admit, I, I don't know about him, but I'm going to say some of the MSG things I didn't think was, was that great, certain great moments perhaps, but, oh, sure. it, but, but um, it's like with Paul, Paul was kind of a safe bet in a way, you could make things sound good, but you'd never have great moments out of it, I, I felt, you know. Yeah, because, um, People I know who are fans of the band throughout the career, mm. they weren't like, well, Michael left, we don't like them anymore. They no. continued to buy their records and, yeah, and go yeah. to the shows every oh, yeah, time. I mean, don't get me wrong though, about that with Paul. What I would say was some of the best, if you were looking for like the absolute, what made it tip or what possibly broke it down, you know, to make people go out and buy, it was probably some of the, the magic moments with Michael that sure. created it. You know, created it. Yeah. Uh, who's the gentleman? filled in with the acoustic set. Oh, Paul. Uh, he does Michael's guitar. What's his name? Paul Gurry. Ah. Yeah, he does Michael's guitar. He used to play in a band called the Red Dogs. Was, right. Yeah, it's a bit like the choir boys. Sort of thing. Sort of like stones in the faces type of thing. But, uh, it sounded nice. Yeah, he's good. He's, so it, it, we felt that it would be quite nice. I mean, I, I can play some acoustic, but some of that stuff's a bit, that it's a bit, quite a lot to it, what Michael's doing. So we figured it'd be quite nice for somebody who is a guitarist to come and play that part. And that, it's slightly different, difficult for Paul Raymond because he plays, I don't know if you know, he plays on a right-handed guitar, and it's left-handed, it's left-handed. So for Lefties. Yeah, so for Paul to come and play an acoustic guy, with the type of strumming would be the wrong way around for Paul. Right. So we figured that if Paul Goering played it, then Paul could play me a simpler bit, which I would have done if Paul had done it, you know. <laughs> I get a rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what we didn't answer. Although when we did try and hear you serious, Michael was kind of looking forward to having a rest himself because Bill was going to sing it just to the keyboard and then we just had about two minutes, you see, we'd have a break and then Michael would come on and bring back the electric part of it like that. That was the idea. Right. And bring the uh, solo into that and bang into the louder stuff. Who, who were your influences growing um, up? Led Zeppelin, I guess. Yeah. Sort of Black Sabbath, that sort of thing. That type of bass player. Yeah. Cool. What was your history going up to up to the moment you joined the UFO? Or did you I didn't play? really. I wasn't even played in another band. Really, that was your first band. Yeah. Sort of like from school, and I lived with Phil in the house or something. You know, sort of thing with another couple of friends of ours. Just sort of started playing, you know. And then, so it didn't. Really, the only thing we ever done was UFO, and that was like before even Michael. Before you know, Michael joined uh, us when. His brothers from school kids who supported us. Right. Actually, the guitarist, this guy, Bert Marsden, played, late played with Whitesnake, was our guitarist at the time, couldn't get across with us his passport. So Michael, who was playing with the school kids who supported us, played for us. And that's how come we got together. What, what have you been up to the last couple of years, up to up to this? Uh, I love it. Writing, playing, I could sort of see Phil and that, but. To be honest with you, it was cheaper for us not to work, you know, uh, in a way. We kind of just thought we'd like, if, if we were going to work and do this, we'd rather pick and choose the time, so just uh, watch television. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love soccer, football, you know, English yeah. football. Yeah. So it's like, I actually, I didn't. 
for me, for the whole time I worked with the band in church, I didn't like it at all. It wasn't any interest whatsoever. And I started to meet people that weren't normally associated with music, other people, and they started talking to me about football. And I really got into Aston Villa Football Club, you know, in England. Uh -huh. And I started watching the results, I started reading about it, and then I started to go. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um. Actually, I, I tell you what, I suppose we should actually uh, call it a day. I tell you what, yeah, because I think we're going to go back to the hotel cool. and get ready to come, you know, yeah. come back again. I'm, I'm through with the questions anyway. You've answered everything.